Welcome to SBB University Caregiving Resources, brought to you by Seniors Blue Book, Resources for Aging Well. I'm Kathleen Warshawski, and our guest today is Ms. Amelia Borland with AIPC Therapy. Welcome, Amelia. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much to Kathleen from Seniors Blue Book to having, for having me. I am absolutely thrilled to be here. I'm very excited to be presenting this three-part series about transfer training and how to transfer smarter, not harder. Um, we are going to go over in this three-part series, a series of principles, techniques, basic strategies to allow you to work smarter, not harder, to protect your back, to protect your client, your patient, your loved one, to make sure that you and them stay as healthy as possible. So. Um, We'll go ahead and jump right in here. Let me introduce myself. My name is Amelia Borland. I am an occupational therapist. I've been an occupational therapist for about 10 years in the Dallas area. I also have my executive certificate in home modification from USA's Leonard Davis School of Gerontology. I have previously been an educator at Texas Women's University. Um, and there I taught advanced clinical reasoning skills, um, hands-on clinical skills, and of course, basic and advanced transfer training. Uh, I am a published author in topics in stroke rehabilitation, and I'm also a health and wellness contributor to a local magazine here in Dallas. Um, I'm an expert in transfer safety and independence, and I am the owner of AIPC Therapy, which is a mobile occupational therapy practice here in Dallas. We serve the DFW area, and we are absolutely committed to making sure that our clients can achieve their goals, improve their outcomes, perform the activities that they want, need, and love to do, and that they um, can live in a safe and functional environment. So if you're here today, it is probably because you are a caregiver, maybe you're a family caregiver, uh, maybe you are a professional caregiver, perhaps you're a nurse, um, but you're someone who is taking care of other people, and maybe you're feeling overwhelmed, you're feeling overworked, um, maybe you're worried about your safety or your client's safety, your patient's safety, your loved one's safety. Maybe you're already in pain from the lifting that you're doing. Um, perhaps you are confused or unsure about the way that you should be moving the people that you're helping or the person that you're helping. Um, maybe you've been let down by prior training or prior education, or you haven't had prior training or education in the past. Um, maybe you're just brand new to transfers and you want to start off on the right foot. Um, either way, I know that you're here because you want to do what's best for you and best for the person that you are transferring. So this training is going to be best for family caregivers and professionals who are committed to safety, for family caregivers and professionals who want to foster independence in the person that they are working with, um, for family caregivers and professionals who want to practice self-care, you want to make sure and take care of yourself too. Um, and for those who are interested in new solutions to common transfer problems that you might be facing. Um, just a little bit of a disclaimer before we get started. This is a general transfer training um, series. It is not a substitute for individualized health care or health advice. So if you feel like you or the person that you're caring for does need individualized attention for a medical condition, then I would advise you to reach out to a licensed and highly skilled healthcare professional such as myself or another highly skilled professional to get the help that you need. Okay, so why do basics matter in transfers? Um, they are so important and I'm gonna start off by telling you a little bit of a story to kind of um, illustrate that for you. So I'm going to talk about a woman that I treated who was in her mid-40s. She was a caregiver for an aging parent um, who was wheelchair bound. She also had kids at home. Um, she had uh, a lot of things on her plate and she was providing a total assistant, a total assist for, for her aging parent. Um, it was a fully dependent transfer. They, they weren't able to provide any assistance at, at all. Um, she was having a lot of back pain. She was under a lot of pressure and stress as a caregiver. She was starting to get really frustrated, really depressed, and she was feeling overwhelmed and isolated. Um, so I came in and I did some basic training with her in her and her parents' situation. And at the end of it all, she found that her parent was actually able to assist with the transfers more than she'd previously thought she was able to provide all of the assistance that she needed to provide without actually doing any physical lifting. 
her back pain was relieved and it resulted in an improved relationship between her and her parent. Um, and so let, let's get right into it now. So what are the basic building blocks of good transfers? So today we're gonna go over the first part of part one, which is proper planning and clear communication. That is absolutely vital to a good transfer. In part two of the series, we're gonna cover um, using good ergonomics, good body mechanics, and good body positioning for success during a transfer. And then in part three, we're gonna talk about correct use of the right equipment, the basics that you absolutely need to know to protect yourself, protect the person that, you're, that you are helping, and to make it as easy as possible. By the end of this first session, um, our goals are that you will understand at least three basic principles of safe transfers that you were previously unaware of. I want you to be able to name at least three principles of proper planning for safe transfers, and I want you to have greater confidence in your ability to communicate clearly during a transfer. Uh, let's start off just very basically, what is a transfer? A transfer is any movement from one surface to another from either a laying down position, a seated position, or a standing position. That could be from getting to a bed to a chair, from a bed to a wheelchair, from a bed to a bedside commode, wheelchair to a toilet, using a walker to get to a shower chair, um, uh, pretty much anything that you can think of uh, that was where you're moving from one surface to another, um, from one position to another counts as a transfer. So why do transfers go wrong? If we're going to talk about how we make them go right, we have to first understand how they're going wrong. Um, so, uh, so we've got a list here. The ones highlighted are the ones we're going to cover in this presentation today. So why do they go wrong? Sometimes, oops, excuse me, let me go ahead and turn that off. Uh, so sometimes transfers go wrong because the surfaces that you're trying to move to and from are too far apart. Sometimes the surfaces are unstable. Um, perhaps they are too high or too low to do the transfer properly. Maybe proper support is either not being provided or you're unable to provide that proper support. It's not available. Um, sometimes people are confused or distracted during transfers and that can make it go wrong. Perhaps a device is being used incorrectly or you have committed to a transfer that's right from the start is already going wrong. And I'll just address that one right now. There are very few situations where you um, have to absolutely follow through all the way to, to the end with a transfer that you know is going wrong. So um, generally we know things aren't gonna go right pretty clearly in the beginning. If, if you know that this transfer is not going smoothly, stop, reset, try again. Um, there's no harm in that. And absolutely you know, committing to a transfer that's already going wrong has a much higher risk than just starting over. Um, sometimes, there's more assistance required than assistance that is available for a transfer. And sometimes people either, they don't know their physical limits or they ignore their physical limits, their mental limits and their emotional limits because all of those things play a part when we are doing um, transfers. Um, and then the last one is going to be poor positioning and poor body mechanics. And we have a whole presentation just for that one topic. Okay, so let's, let's jump in here. I wanna tell you first what transfers are absolutely not about. Transfers are not about brute strength, not at all. I am 5'5 five, five on a good day, I'm pretty petite, and I have participated and successfully completed transfers um, from every kind of advanced transfer in the ICU all the way down to basic transfers in people's living rooms. And the reason that I'm able to be successful during those transfers is not because of my muscles, it is because of my brain. It is because I'm thinking ahead and planning ahead um, before I get started to make sure that I'm doing it in the smartest, easiest, safest possible way. So I want you to go forward with this, with, with that in your mind, that this is not about brute strength. This is about good planning and, and properly um, making your plan to go ahead. So what does proper planning mean? These are, these are the basic bullet points and then we're gonna break them out in the following slides. Um, so to, proper, uh, to plan properly for a transfer, you wanna make sure that you have gathered all of your equipment and you wanna place it in close proximity. You wanna make sure that no clothing, no equipment, 
no medical lines or devices are going to be in the way that they're not going to be in danger of being caught, pulled, um, damaged, anything like that. You want to ensure that your transfer surfaces are touching, locked, and stable. You want to ensure that you can adequately and actually safely provide the physical support that's going to be required for this transfer. And you want to ensure the person that you're transferring is calm and ready to go. So let's talk about each of those individually. Gathering all equipment and placing that equipment in close proximity. Before you ever start to move anyone, um, make sure that you have all of the equipment that you're going to need positioned for the transfer. <clears throat> Excuse me. So um, you want to make sure that your chairs or your wheelchairs are placed at about a 90 degree angle from the, standing, from the starting surface. And don't worry if that doesn't make sense to you. I have pictures later on, so you'll be able to see what that looks like. Um, you can make that angle a little bit smaller if you, if you need to. And, and again, you'll kind of see what that means uh, a little bit further in. You want to have walkers placed directly in front of the person being transferred if they are going to stand up and use the walker or if the walker is being used to assist with the transfer. Um, you want to have your gate belt and any other equipment that you might need within reach in order to be placed or positioned in the, in the appropriate way at the correct time during the transfer. And you want to have all of those things positioned so that they will be within reach of you while you're still able to keep at least one hand on the person that you are transferring. That way you will always be able to react and, and be there if they need a little bit of extra support. Okay, so here are the pictures that I was talking about. Um, so, uh, so as you can see here, um, it's a picture of a wheelchair and a uh, walker. And as you can see, the wheelchair is placed so close that it's actually touching the bed. Um, and you can see there that it's about, it's a little bit less than a 90 degree angle if you kind of, let me show you here. So if you're looking at this angle right here, it's about a 90 degree angle or a little bit less. Um, and that's basically just to reduce the distance that the person who's moving actually is going to move. The reason it's so important to have this touching here is if we have a space between, let's say, the bed and the wheelchair, um, then that's a space that the person that you are moving can fall into. If there is no space there, there is nowhere for them to fall into. It's, it's just that simple. So we want it to be um, as close as possible, um, touching if, if possible. And then for the other picture here, you'll sort of have to imagine that there's a person sitting on the edge of the bed there um, with the walker uh, right in front of them where they can grab it. Okay, so the next item for proper planning making sure no clothing, uh, no equipment, no medical lines or devices are in danger of being caught, pulled, or damaged during the transfer. So you're gonna want to, first of all, make sure you know what is there. Um, check all the catheters, any lines that might, be, um, that might be connected at each end. So what I mean by each end is you wanna see where that thing is connected to the person that you're moving. And you also want to see where it is connected and what is what it is connected to on the other end. Um, uh, you want to make sure that there is enough slack in the lines connecting those two ends uh, that you can actually fully perform the move that you need to, or you need to ensure that that full line with the connecting end is coming with you all the way and moving with the transfer and is secure. So for example, if someone has a, a catheter, um, you're gonna wanna make sure that the line for the catheter going into you know, whatever sort of receptacle they're using for the catheter is coming all the way with you and is secured so it doesn't get pulled out. Uh, you wanna double check for things like peg tubes, suprapubic catheters, um, et cetera, anything that could be caught, pulled, or damaged by a gate belt, or your hands. So you need to know what's connecting where um, on the person's body that you're moving, if they have any of those things, so that you're not in danger of accidentally pulling anything out or doing any physical damage. Um, and of course, you want to check for equipment that's under the bed, under the wheelchair, or at ground level, because sometimes those um, the connecting ends for those things can be stored in different places. You wanna make sure you know where it all is, so you can bring it with you as needed or make sure that there's enough enough slack to perform your transfer safely. Um, 
You want to ensure transfer surfaces are touching, locked, and stable. So I talked about that a little bit before. Um, close is not close enough. And I, I found that when I used to start, when I first started doing transfer training with the Master of Occupational Therapy students at TWU, I would tell them, make sure that the surface is close. And what I learned is that there is a wide variation of what we all think of as close between, um, between two surfaces or two objects. And so I transitioned the words that I used because I didn't really mean close. What I really meant was touching. So you wanna make sure that they are touching, locked, and stable. Um, there are lots of different devices and pieces of medical equipment that may have wheels on them. So you're gonna to want to ensure that you know uh, which pieces of equipment you're using have wheels and ensure they're locked. It could be obviously wheelchairs, transport chairs, um, rollators, uh, any other type of rolling chair, like a rolling shower chair, mechanic lifts, and, and hospital beds. You want to make sure that those are all locked and stable before you start moving. The next item, um, you have to ensure that you can adequately and safely provide physical support that is required for that transfer. And so these are really a series of questions that you have to ask yourself. Do I have the right or adequate training to actually perform this transfer? Does this person require more than one person to assist? Or do I have the right equipment to transfer them safely? Am I injured? Am I confident that I can do this? Um, am I doing this in the available way that requires the least amount of lifting and the least amount of work? And is that available way within my physical capa uh, capabilities? And you know, sometimes these aren't uh, convenient questions for us to ask or answer, but we have, to an we have to ask ourselves these questions and we have to answer them honestly in order to make sure that if the answer to any of these is no, that we can find a solution that actually is going to be safe and effective and that we get the assistance, the training, whatever it is we need so that we can continue to help the person that we're helping um, you know, safely and, and for, for themselves and for, our, and for them and for us too. Um, the other part of this is making sure to take care of your own body. When you're not in your caregiving role, when you, um, when you, when you have time or when you make time for yourself to make sure that you are taking care of your own health and your own body so that you can continue to provide the physical support um, that you need to provide as a caregiver when you're doing transfers. Um, so you want to ensure that the person that you are transferring is calm. I will tell you, nothing goes downhill faster than transfers where someone is panicking. It is not going to go well. And so if you have someone who is fearful, who has a lot of anxiety already, and, and you know it, usually you're going to know that beforehand. You want to take your time to really calm them down, explain what, what's going on. Um, and, and have them be as calm as possible before you attempt to make that move. So you want to make sure and cue them to slow down their breathing. You wanna slow down your own breathing. Uh, speak calmly, speak slowly, move slowly and move confidently. Um, you know, they're gonna take their cues from you. So if you're calm, if you're breathing slowly, if you're explaining what you're going to do one step at a time, that's going to go a long way to making that person feel more confident in what's about to happen. Always remember that relaxed faces equal calm people. I am sure you've, you've probably heard, you know, if you smile, then it helps you to feel happier. Well, it's kind of the same thing. If you can get someone's face to relax, it will, it will change them, um, sort of their psychological state and allow them to be more calm. So by just giving the, you know, the gentle cue, relax your face, breathe slowly, let's breathe together, let's be relaxed. And, and getting that face to relax can really go a long way to helping ensure that the person is calm, they're confident, and that they're not panicking during that transfer. Good communication um, is a really big part of remaining calm, but it's also a really big part of proper planning. So how do we communicate clearly during a transfer? First, we need to reduce the distractions that are around. That means you might need to turn off the TV. You might need to turn off the radio. You might want to close the door. Um, 
if there are little kids or, or pets or animals around, you might want to find a way for them to be safely occupied during the transfer. Um, you should always discuss the goal of the transfer before you get started. So for an example, you might say, uh, so we're going to sit up on the edge of the bed and then we're gonna get over to the bedside commode so that you can use the restroom. So rather than just you know starting a movement without someone maybe being fully aware of what's happening, just engage them, let them know what the goal of it is in the first place so that you can have less fear, less anxiety and, and sort of greater participation in it from the beginning. You wanna make sure, and before you do anything, explain the steps of the transfer slowly. First, we're going to sit up on our side. Then I'm gonna have you put your hands here on the bed. Next, I'm going to put this belt on you here. I will help you to stand on the count of three. We'll do it all together and I will help you for whatever you need. Don't worry, I'm gonna tell you the steps again as we go. So just explaining what's going, what's gonna happen um, can go a long way. You wanna ask for confirmation that the person understands if that's possible. Um, and if there are multiple people participating in the transfer, you know, besides you and the person that is being transferred, you wanna confirm that each person who is participating is physically stable, that they are comfortable with their, with their role and that they are ready to move. Um, and one way that you can do that is to have people repeat back steps and readiness. So if you are leading the transfer, you might say, are all the lines clear? And have everyone repeat back, yes, all the lines are clear. Is everyone, is everyone stable and ready to lift? Yes, I'm stable and ready to lift. Are all the brakes locked? Yes, all the brakes are locked. And that way, you know, you just have uh, that good communication that all of the steps that need to be done are ready and that every person who is going to participate is also ready. Um, uh, and then also, you know, make, making sure that you count off before any large moves can be helpful too, so that everyone is prepared and they, they can move at the same time. So to wrap up for, um, for this part in the series, um, use of proper planning and good communication are absolutely the underlying foundation of all successful transfers. It doesn't matter whether you are working in the ICU or you are a family caregiver in the bedroom or the living room or the bathroom. If you have proper planning and good communication, you are going to increase the participation of the person who is being transferred. You're going to decrease the physical demands that are placed on you during that transfer. You're going to promote calm in the situation increase your confidence and the confidence of the person who is being moved. You're going to decrease distraction and prevent those complications um, that can lead to injury for you as the caregiver or the person that you are assisting. So if you need more advanced training, if you need um, individual training or customized solution or perhaps a staff training, um, then please feel free to reach out to me. You can give me a call at 469-998-1245. And uh, my email is there as well, amelia.borland at aipctherapy.com. You can request a free consultation and, and absolutely get the right recommendations to make sure that you get the training, the solutions, the options that are right for you and your situation. If you want more access to free information, free tips, then you can sign up for my video newsletter on transfer training. Just visit my website at www.aipctherapy.com backslash transfer training and you can sign up for the newsletter there. And also, of course, I want to encourage you to watch parts two and three of this series, Transfer Smarter, Not Harder. Um, so coming soon, part two is going to be on using your body position and good body mechanics for success, how to work smarter and not harder by following simple guidelines for movement and positioning, both for you and the person that you are transferring. If you have any questions or concerns, please reach out to me. Uh, call me, Amelia, at 469-998-1245, or please send me an email. I would be happy to answer any questions, respond to any comments, um, hear your story, and help you find whatever solutions you need. And of course, thank you to Kathleen at Seniors Blue Book Dallas um, for hosting this to help me provide this education it's so important to help protect people and, and keep them safe. So thank you very much. That's it for today. Of course, if you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to reach out to me. You can request your free consultation if you feel like you need 
individualized help, um, specific training or staff training, and you can get the recommendations that you need for, um, for the solution that works for you. Again, if you want free tips, you can sign up for my free, new, free newsletter um, by visiting my website. And don't forget to watch uh, Transferring Smarter Not Harder Parts 2 and 3. Until next time, thanks so much. Bye. Thanks, Amelia.